We dream in colors borrowed from the sea. And while we dream, those colors carry us to places we may never know in the waking world. The sea brings life and deals death. It is both kind and treacherous. What dreams may come can be as sweet as morning dew or the vile makings of a nightmare. I heard this verse from a wise elf who once traveled through my neck of the woods. He had seen many things along his travels on the oceans beyond the shores of the Sword Coast. He said his name, which in its entirety was what some would call a mouthful, but I knew him as Westar. In a search for his ultimate destiny, he found himself in a tavern, a cozy place where sailors found respite and gathered for news and to spread gossip. A rumor had been plaguing the harbor for days that no ship should set sail for a great monster of the sea was lurking in the water. Near the dawn of the world. The sky is pitch black, yet a full moon still shines brightly through the darkness. Thunder and lightning crack, electrifying the lands as rain pours down, as if there is a battle of gods going on above. A great clap of thunder, the bolt sends, goes straight to the earth and it sunders the earth, causing mass destruction. And the people all cower and run and they flee. And out of the destruction, a naked figure appears, his broad shoulder, long gray beard, his one eye. His other eye, the socket, in its place is a whirling stars to go on infinitely. These ancient people look up to him and they all go to their knees and they start chanting his name. Koza, the raging one. Koza, the raging one. Koza, the raging one. It is with that, Westar wakes up from his vision. Ah. Koza the Raging One. You would know him as the Storm Lord, Talos. But that was his ancient name when he was first born. I am still haunted by this raging storm god that my friends and I overcame. I will have to continue my pilgrimage until these visions make sense to me. Wait, did I fall asleep on the bar? <laughs> no, you, you had a vision. You had a vision. You're having these visions. He has visions all the time. Yeah. He's a visiony kind of fellow. So, what are you? Tell us about what you're on right now. Tell us a little bit about Westar and uh, his journey he's on right now. Yeah. Well, Westar uh, went on a glorious adventure not too long ago, and in this town of Fandelvin, there was a dragon in the area who was terrorizing the land and he and the unlikely group of companions that he made uh, joined forces and overcame the dragon but afterwards he decided to continue just traveling the land alone because he is half wood elf half eladrin from the city of Koromir, and he was a member of the Emerald Enclave, and they are dedicated to the preservation of nature and um, what have you. And he has visions. His mother went returned to the Feywild a long time ago. She sends him visions that take him different places. So he's kind of a wanderer, and uh, he's sort of like a lone Jedi, if you will, mm-hmm. who's this like. Uh, he has these abilities that he gained um, 
after being injured with these friends uh, on that adventure he was he was mauled almost to death by a bear so if he takes his shirt off he has a bunch of scars on his chest where the bear ripped his chest open after that somehow these psychic abilities like immersed from him um, because he almost saw his death and now he has the ability to almost push his soul out of his fists and use that as a weapon so it's pretty crazy but he yeah he travels the world not knowing where he's going but uh he just kind of follows his visions and where the where the road takes him and with this vision of the storm lord um that's unnerving to him for he remembers in these past few months the orcs in the area of Van Delven and, and, and the surrounding areas of Van Delven had gained to get joined together in worship of Talos and they were going to try and bring his vestige to the earth, to the world to destroy it along with the ice dragon that they defeated but we defeated them but Talos is forever so here I am on this Aramente if you will Aramente. absolutely <clears throat> Yeah, you found yourself going from ship to ship, paying for your ways to get around. Uh, you're just going on this journey. You try to find your next adventure, your next point in life. Listening for whispers. Yeah. And uh, protecting you, uh, others when they need it. Yeah. And then um, you found yourself right now locked on this island in the uh, Sea of Swords. All the ships are dry dock because there's rumors of a sea monster out there and no one will set sail um, and you are just holed up in uh, Ruthie's cozy tavern <laughs> waiting hopefully for someone to show up to take you to your next adventure <sighs> and over at another table are the members of Kelepi's Kiss uh, and they're just having an ale well <laughs> Well, to good adventures. That's the captain, Zaldar Flushin. He's a captain of Kelpie's Kiss, and his first mate is Arrow. And then, of course, he has his bosom. Bosom mate. Bosom mate. Yes. <coughs> so, have you had any more visions? Not lately. Mm. I've been hoping. I wish. Well, I got orders to go to Waterdeep where we'll meet a mage, or a wizard, a wizard, I'm sorry, a real wizard. I'm a mage. And oh, I should talk like this. And uh, he'll, uh, maybe he'll help you unlock some of that mystery of your past. I've heard of this place many times. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah, I hear there's all kinds of stuff to do there. <laughs> Lots of random encounters. Yes, and to sell, sell some of the stuff that we have as well. Yeah. Of course, of course. Well. Have another beer then? Of course. I mean, we're waiting. They won't let any of the ships leave, I guess, because of sea monsters, I hear. Ah, uh, when has that stopped us before? <laughs> Never. I have no problem going through anything. I imagine these guys are, uh, they're only, the only three Harpers on the ship. Even though it's a Harper ship, I think they hire a different crew and they change them out and stuff. But they're the, the core to it, the three of them. Okay. Uh, well, uh, then uh, these guys kind of uh, abruptly walk past you, uh, Westar. They kind of, one kind of kicks your legs because your legs are up and they walk past you towards, they're going towards the, the sprite arrow. Pardon me. I wasn't talking to you. No, I simply excused myself. Yeah, as you should. Hmm. Be well. Yeah, you too. <laughs> and then they they walk up to the they walk up to Arrow. You was cheating at that dice game. Me 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 me. You owe us. You owe us a ship. Me 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 me. And he turns invisible. <laughs> well, he probably was cheating. Look, gentlemen, uh, Jory here doesn't want to have a fight. 
She don't look all that tough. Well, then best not be on your way then. So yeah. you don't have to take a look at it. Yeah. You smell that, guys? That smells like elf shit. Lots of long ears up in here. I think you're quite rude, lad. Well, look. If you would just give us the deed to your ship, we'll call it all even, and we'll go. <laughs> Captain, do you know that? I, I didn't gamble with you. This guy's got you. jokes. Go find the pixie. All right. Look, if you don't want there to be any kind of trouble, you'll give us a deed now, or we'll put you elves in your place. I'm actually half elf. You still got pointy ears. They look ugly anyway. All right, I'm gonna only give you one more chance, mate. Captain, what do you think? This is your Aramente, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna give him like the, the oh, look. The intimidation, like roll intimidation check okay. then, yes. <laughs> give him a look. Ooh. <laughs> That's a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, this is going to be the greatest ever. Go on. No! Okay. <laughs> the whole restaurant said. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't like the look in her eyes. And her hair is kind of fiery. Maybe she's got some of the magics I hear. Well, all right. If you see that pixie, he owes us. Yeah, mate. Walk on. out. <laughs> they mosey out. Yeah, they just mosey <laughs> past you. They give you a leer. Yeah, stinking elves. I could have got him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, are you sure you, you don't remember anything? I mean, what did they see in your eyes there? I don't know. It was a bit fuzzy. All I could see was like maybe dark skies, dark water. That's about it. Well, it's kind of fuzzy still. We'll have to find a way to get our ship free. You know, maybe we'll just sneak out when Ty, Ty comes in. You probably overheard him saying something like that. You're yeah. looking for passage out of here. Will you move my miniature over to you? West Star will come before you guys and say, Greetings. I heard that you may have a ship. I assure you, I am not like your rude friends who just left. I merely am seeking passage, and if you're willing to try and sneak out of here, I would much appreciate if I could perhaps tag along. Is there anything in your vestiges that would show him <clears throat> that you got some kind of magical properties? I have... Uh, I could sh demonstrate magic. No, but I mean, without without you telling him how. Was there he way looks he very. I mean, he's um, a mage. He looks very ruggedly wood wood elf kind of person. You know, the only mm -hmm. thing that you might recognize is there might be like some sort of like badge on him that will see like the Emerald Enclave on it. You know, nothing's uh, nothing's free, mate. No, no, I expect to pay, both with gold and with service I am fairly good in a fight and it looks like you all might be the type who need such soldiers on your side you see what she just did there yeah love I don't think there's anything for that <laughs> I think we're all right I won't very, need your muscle it is very admirable to be able to avoid combat whenever possible I commend you for not giving in to your anger this is a noble and very customer, um, in, in line with the customs of your people, is it not, Eladrin? Uh, well, the thing about it is, is that if you've known my travels, I'm not, not very keen on strangers, sir. You are Eladrin, are you not, though? I can smell the Feywild on you. I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. What is this Eladrin you speak of? Eladrin, they are a race of elves from the Feywild. My kin. Yeah. I can tell that this one here 
is descendant of such people. You are in the springtime of your life, are you not? Um, she looks all confused. Kind of reach over to the captain and my face went from like total like anger because she just, you know, went with these guys before and then he has this other stranger in front of her. Now she's kind of like, ah, oh, captain, maybe, maybe we should use him. It seems like a strapping ad. Look, well, I don't want your coin and I don't need your muscle, but it does seem like you've got quite the insight. Perhaps you can help my friend here. She's trying to unlock some mysteries of her past. I would be happy to. Yeah, as long as you don't use any of that taboo on me or anything like that. I would not do anything that you did not give me consent for. But if I can help you, I would be glad to. Well, uh, why don't the two of you get to know each other a little bit better? I'm gonna go check on Arrow and see where he disappeared to. Maybe he's gotten to another game of dice. <laughs> And then we're going to set sail for water deep. Ah. All right. Very good. Sounds good. He kind of goes out. He leaves. <clears throat> you guys alone for a few moments if you would like to talk. Have you never really heard of the Eladrin people? No. I mean, that's actually the first time I've ever heard it. Yes. Eladrin. Yeah, speak more, please. Well, they are like, well, you and I. Elves just like the elves of this realm, only they come from the Feywild, which is a place that you can only reach through magic or portals or magic. passages okay. that are unknown to most. This is where the fairies live and the Eladrim and many other strange creatures. I have never been there myself, it's where my mother lives, but I have seen many visions of it. And there's Most. people like us, pointy ears. Of course. Hmm. Only we are different than most elves. Why's that? Your spirit embodies one of the seasons. And right now I can tell just from your aura. You see, I have special abilities. My mind is opened and touched by the Feywild. I can look into someone's mind, I can sense their auras, and I can tell that you are in the springtime of your life. Not joshing me, that sounds a bit odd. I assure you, I could prove it to you if you would like. I can connect to your mind, look deep inside it. Do you really have no inclination of where you're from? Listen, there's no games to touch my boobs or something. I assure you, I've, I've no interest in such things. All right, because there's a lot of lads on this ship of mine that like to sit all the time. So, no. like I said, strangers. No. Okay. <laughs> I am not one of those kinds of people. I live for a different purpose in this life. Hello. I like what I'm hearing. Please. What should we do? Can we just go to this fake world? It is impossible to go there, but... I might look into your mind and see if there is a remnant of it. I don't know if you're going to ever find anything. It's been years. Very well. We will enter our trance-like state as if we are going to rest. Always close my eyes or something. Yes. Okay. And focus. Take a deep breath. And it almost feels like a pool of cool water enters your brain because it's him, like, connecting with your mind. Okay. I don't feel anything yet. All of a sudden, you kind of sense that you're standing in a black room with, n like, nothing around you, with just, like, maybe a spotlight on you. Well, hold up. And Take now you turn to your right, and he's standing with you in this dark place. Oh, whoa. We are in your mind, hmm. together. This is odd. It is. Usually one's mind is filled with the colors and the paths that lead to the story of your life. You can lace my ale or anything. I can see the shore. I can see two loving family members who kept you. 
trained you to use a sword. They look like Northmen. Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's them. My parents. Only parents. But before this, it is dark, shadowy, almost as if it is blocked off. Nothing there. That's what's what this? Same feeling of water, darkness. That's all I've ever felt. I see it, the dark water. I see your outline standing tall, sword and bow in hand. Whoa, that's me. With eleven figures standing at your side. Twelve of you there were. But it is hard to say who they are or see their faces. But there's something pushing us back. Some evil entity. Yeah, those are my mates. I do and remember that now. This ominous shape comes from the shadow and reaches out. Whoa! And the connection is broken. Then what was that? It is evident that something magical has blocked off whatever part of your life you have forgotten. The Feywild is no longer there. Magic clouds your mind. A curse of some kind. It would be impossible for me to figure out what it is with my meager skills. But that is the case. We can't try again? We can't try to go back? I am afraid that is the extent of my ability. Was there something else I can give you? Or something... someone else? There certainly would be somewhere in the world, but we would have to find them together. But I am not that person. Hmm. But perhaps what I have told you today gives you some sort of clarity and... I do, I do know those... Into who you are. I do remember. I was a warrior. And I was with... We were... We were on a mission. And there was twelve of us. And we were in this dark forest. And I remember seeing something off in the distance. And I didn't know what it was. It looked like an ore of something. And it was it sparkled and it was bright. And I started going towards it. And all I remember is I fell. And then that's where I've been seeing these for years. This this water, darkness. And that's all I've seen. So yeah, yeah. that's all I that's that's all I can remember. That is a powerful magic to be able to erase from you the fact that you are from the Feywild. For the Feywild is pure and chaotic and more mystical and magical than anything you could ever imagine. For yeah. something to push that from your mind yeah. must be a powerful being. Well, whatever it is, we need to, I need to figure it out. Well. We need more of these visions, as you say. Perhaps today, after all this time, with me pointing you in this direction, perhaps it has given you a little bit of a foot in the door. It has. I mean, it's been a lot more than, like I said before. Make a crack and it will grow. Perhaps I have done that for you today. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It is my pleasure. And this very serene moment is jacked up by this giant seagull popping through the window. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. Th this message is from Lucian Skyhorn from the White House. Mine, mine, mine. We've been attacked by creatures from the sea. Mine, mine, mine. Please say and help before it's too late. I beg whoever hears this. Mine, mine, mine. And then the seagull <laughs> breaks free and flies away. I don't know who those people are. It sounds like they're in trouble. I think so. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Grubby little things. <laughs> They've been eating out of my hand for the last two days, though. They're quite friendly when you give them food. Yeah, one thing <clears> off with my, my, my loaf of bread the other day. What do you do on the ship? I'm a bosun, mate. 
what, what does what, what, a bosun do? It could be anything from swabbing the decks all the way up to whatever the captain needs. Have you seen much action here on the ship? Oh, well, there's quite a bit of stories. I could keep us going all night. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy a good conversation. My last two companions, one of them didn't like to talk very much, and the other one liked to talk too much, so... Well, this might be... <laughs> it would be nice to enjoy the company of an Aladrin. Yeah, I can I tell you what I know of that place. Of course, that conversation can happen on the boat, <clears throat> if you guys want to help. Yeah, yes, we need this, to we're going to go tell Lucian the captain. Lucian Skyhorn, who's used his abilities to send an animal mm -hmm. to transmit a message to y'all. Well... Let's go find the captain, and uh, let's let's see what the sequel's all about. Let's see lead what's going away. on. All right, sounds good. I am your guest. You guys would leave the uh, Ruth's cozy tavern as you get to the docks. The captain's there. <clears throat> well, we're ready to go. Everything's loaded up. The crew's ready. We're going to sneak right on out of here. I know no one else wants to leave because they're too afraid to see monsters. Yes, we have. Just heard some news from a seagull. <laughs> Wait a second. We don't really need to bring him, do we? I know you sometimes tell me you can talk to animals, but I thought that's just the wine talking. <laughs> no, it's actually true. It's Captain. It's actually true. Um, he let me see more visions, and I think that that's what I need. And he seems, he, well, he says he seems to know what he's doing, and he said that he's a fighter as well, so maybe we should bring him along. Me, 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 me. All right, Ariel. Well, I know we live in a fantasy world where people can talk to animals. Well, I know that's a ridiculous claim I made there. Well, uh, you say he's in trouble. That's the bird's what he in said. A uh, sea monster. What did he say the captain's name was again? Cloud Spire. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sea monster about, and they are under attack. He said he needed help desperately. Are you talking about Skyhorn? Yes, that's right. the man. That's him. And you can see in the distance there's a lighthouse. That's Skyhorn Lighthouse there. It's maybe take us a few hours, maybe three hours to get there. We can check it out. Can't hurt. See if these tales of sea monsters is true. I am very interested. Usually when a small creature asks me for help, it leads me to the next place I need to be. And I let fate usually depict my road. Right, then, uh, let's ship off. It is no common thing to run into an Eladrin as well. Surely it is a sign. I like it so far. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite the uh, gift from the gods. Especially one that doesn't know their own heritage. Yeah. For me, it's black and water. <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be some light in there for you. It can't all be dark. I hope so. You are a man of magic, are you not? I am. I dabble. It seems there is a magical entity that has taken her memories from her, clouded her mind, shielded her from her past. That's oh, I can't all I break can through. Tell. I've tried. There's a magic somewhere in this world, I'm sure. Your journey will have to lead you there. Until then, sea monsters. We'll see. At sea. <laughs> <laughs> Kelopai's kiss cuts through the ocean swift in a bold path. Um, you know Their loyal crew mans all the uh, stations. Everything's good. You guys are out on the top deck while the captain and his first mate are guiding the ship. Right now, everything's clear. The skies are clear. You're headed straight to the lighthouse. Nothing seems amiss. Your bow is fascinating. You see the markings here? Mm hmm These are sylvan symbols. Definitely made in your home country. It's a handy thing. This is very well made. I don't think I've ever seen its equal. It's the only thing I had when I washed up in, in that vision that we saw. Just two, 
two Nords that took me in. Only parents I ever had. Only thing I ever can. My past, anyways. Well, I don't like to assume, but most of our kind are pretty handy with a bow. How do you handle yours? And he's going to pull an apple out of his pack, take a bite, and throw it up into the air. Before he even said it, it was already out. Arrow through it. Not bad. Very good indeed. <clears throat> it's funny, you like pirate ships. I like baseball. <laughs> Pull the baseball out and throw it up in the air, <laughs> and he too. <laughs> right oh, through it. That was good. Good shot. We can work together. Maybe we can bring this evil sea monster to its knees. It'll be or, a breeze. Just you like know, today's sky. Shoo it away. I don't like to kill things unnecessarily. If they touch me, they're gonna die. <laughs> the sea has made you hard. No, just smart. Sea looks to be getting a little bit choppier. Scott clouds are coming in. I am no seaman myself. So, I'll take your word for it. But yes, the storm does seem to be gathering. As you guys looked around, if you want to give me perception checks. Okay. okay. Both of y'all. Got 19. Okay. Very good. Mine is a 16. You, uh... You see, like, a strange wave slicing towards the ship. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay. You see it with your perception. Oh, okay. What do you do? What was it? A strange a wave. 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 Oh. Just the water. Like, it's rippling. It's it's not like there's any creature in it. It's just like the water is forming, strangely. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back around and look at everyone behind me because we were kind of up front. Uh, Cap... Uh, I've been to sea with you quite a bit, and this wave that's doesn't look doesn't look normal, I should say, Cap. I think you should take a look at it. Well, if you say it's dangerous, let's prepare. Yeah, it don't look good. All hands, brace for impact. And so, what do you guys do? Um, Westar will. Uh just find himself a nice place to plant himself and, and hold on tight to a barrel that's tied down or something. What do you do? All, the, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab onto the, the ropes on the sails and I'm just going to hold on. Brace for impact. All right. And this wave smashes it inside the ship. Do a DC, I'm sorry, a dexterity save. Natural 20. Eleven. So that's eleven added with your thingy? Yeah. Okay. So this wave smashes into the ship, it's a sickening crunchier and you you're uh you had that barrel so you stand tall and you kinda of start slipping a little bit, but you knew it was coming so you had prepared yourself so you don't necessarily go prone. And the captain whirls the wheel around, he's like, There's something something hitting this ship. Um we're gonna make for the uh, island, the lighthouse. And he's trying to cruise it. And you can kind of see the wave curling around to come back around. And then it kind of comes out of the water and it almost makes like a serpentine look to it. And it's just smashing the boat. Um, and it's gonna use whelm to just spread water all across the whole boat, uh, the whole top of the boat. Um, give me a, uh, I wanna say it's a deck save. I've written it down. Right, so I'm doing this right because I've never done a dexterity. Yep, yes, that. it's a uh, DC, I'm sorry, it's a strength save. Not my favorite one. 17. 15? 17. 5. 5. Alright, so this water comes across, and even though you're on the barrel, the water engulfs you. And you find yourself grappled in this water. It's almost like the water is surrounding you, like you're in a sphere. Mm. Um, so you look over and you see your new friend, and you now 
are having to hold your breath because you're literally like underwater. But it's just like this cone of water around you. It's like the oceans come to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What would you like to do? Um. Okay. Um. Chad? You pass it. You were able to push through the water. You're I see, so I used see, to it. I see my new newly friend uh -huh. uh, fall over. Well, he's, he's kind of just trapped in the water. The water surrounded him. Yeah, my my uh, my cloak uh -huh. that's on me is the cloak of Manta Ray. Oh, okay. So um, what that is is while wearing the cloak with its hood up, you can breathe underwater and you have swimming speed up to 60 feet. So awesome. I'm going to just, my hood goes over me uh -huh. and without even thinking, you know, I, I jump to him. Okay. And I dive in. Well, he's, he's still on the deck of the boat. He's just kind of, the water's co covered over him. It's kind of holding in place like, like a water ball around yeah, him. yeah oh, like okay. a water ball around him can he's in, go this, in there and try and get me out if you want you can pull him out you can push him out you Wa can do water, you want. water's been my friend so i yep. think without even thinking about it it's her bravery of being on the ship for so long she jumped she's into you she's gonna go right for it and try to grab him all right okay. and then i'm just gonna say do like cap i don't think this is just the way do, do a strength <laughs> check strength the check okay uh yeah strength check to see if uh you can uh Push him free. Okay. So it's a uh, thirteen. All right. You even though you are friends with water, this water is not your friend. Great. And even you get in there, you can't quite free him from it. Okay. And he's you can kind of see he's starting to drown a little bit. Mm. Um. Okay. What would you like to do? You, you want to try to get out of the water? I want to. Um, what I would like to do is see if I can't. Manifest my psychic weapons and push them through the water to see if this thing isn't a, a sentient being that will take. That will see if it will, uh, you know, maybe it, maybe it will recoil at this or whatever if it hurts it. All right, let's try. I can, and I can just make like an attack roll or sure. something. Okay, there would be eighteen plus um, a lot. Eighteen plus. Four, so twenty something to hit. Yeah, it's it's eighteen plus seven. So it seems to be 20, immune to 25. magic. Immune to magic. Mm. Nothing happens. It's just water. You Your can ladies go through the water. You can see the colors in the in the water just changing. Okay. <laughs> it's not corporeal. <laughs> Green and pink. And so another blast comes to the other side of the ship, pushing the ship uh, to see if you guys can stay on your feet. Please roll another dexterity save. Fifteen. All right. Uh, Eleven. So you stay on your feet. You lose your footing because you had jumped at him. Mm -hmm. Now you've fallen, you've fallen prone on the ground. You're kind of, the water's all over the place. The ship's getting covered with stuff. Um, so you're going to you're going to take 13 points bludgeoning damage in that water sphere. Okay. And it takes half movement for you to get up if you'd like. But at this point, the boat's shaking, so everything movements down to half speed. Mm. So it's difficult terrain, I would say. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? And am I still close by to it? Yeah, you're on the ground next to him. You, okay. you kind of lost your footing because the boat's rocking. So I, I see that he's trying to do his... his yeah, the magic's not working. And yeah. I, it, yeah, it's just bouncing off the water. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my sword and try to like aimlessly stab at it. <laughs> see what's going through. See if it's like a water... Yeah, elemental. like if it's some type of... <laughs> the only thing I can think of. You're like it's the like, only thing cold steel won't yes. cut. <laughs> at this point. You want me to go ahead? Sure. Okay. Yeah, attack roll. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 18. Your sword just goes through the water just like his powers did. It's just, it's a non It's like just, it's like water that's being controlled somehow. It's not necessarily a creature, but just like the elements themselves are being controlled. Hmm. Would I be able to use magic to escape the water? Sure, you, you, you can certainly try. Can I misty step out of this water? Absolutely. I love it. After he takes that gulp of seawater, he's going to, you see like the water just go, and he stands next to you like self, 
<laughs> the smoke comes flying off of them. Just... <sighs> the water seems to be alive. <laughs> so and we see. Unaffected by magics. <laughs> just as you say that, or another steel. one's hitting the ship again. So another deck save. The captain's pulling the wheel. The winds, the mast is pushing them as fast as he can. The crew's holding on. Men have fallen off the side of this ship. They've lost crew members this whole time. 25. 17. Yes. So you both now, you know what's going on. You've gotten this under control. You guys are staying your ground. Mm. And uh, uh, you see, like, one of the crew members standing by the side. And then the wave comes, the whelm comes through to hit him. And it smashes him. But just as it's going to grab him, this hand comes and grabs him and you know you realize the captain catched uh <laughs> age hand to grab him but pull him back before he falls into the water right <laughs> and uh he's like i'm gonna get this ship into docks whatever that is out there and that sea creature slithering around looking at y'all he dips back in the sea as you guys get closer to the land where he can't get to you and then you guys have made it to the rocky island uh, and there's a lighthouse situated at the top there's steep rocks on both sides. Um, there's a low stone wall that goes around the top. It's about 100 feet in diameter. And then there's some staircases <coughs> you guys can go up if you'd like to <coughs> dismount. Oh. I don't recommend drinking seawater. <coughs> Got a mouthful, did you? Yes. Quick belly ain't doing that. More than I would like. Oh, you didn't throw up, so you did well. <coughs> <laughs> Oh, that's seaweed. You spoke too soon. <laughs> What's that? Meep, 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 meep. Arrow says the ship took some damage. We're going to try to repair it while you guys go on land. Mm. Very good. Uh, I would like nothing more than to step foot on the land right now. <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> yes. Now yeah, you've got your sea legs. Thank you, yes. Uh, there they are. So you guys exit the ship and you get on land. Uh, you probably rode a little boat up there. And the dock, there, there's docks out front too. So let's say you guys docked at the docks and you got off the boat, and uh, you guys start making your way to the lighthouse. Um, what is the purpose of these houses? I don't know. It looks vacant to me. There's definitely a light still shining through it. So whoever is there is still manning the lighthouse to protect ships from uh, crashing into the islands. Um, you guys find the stairs leading to the lighthouse very slippery. Uh, they're wet. Uh, there's a lot of crumbling stone walls around you. The stone lighthouse is 60 feet tall, and there's a blazing beam illuminating the sky. I once did go to a lighthouse, now that I think about it. This is a vision you just had. No, I simply got my butt kicked pretty hard there, and it was, it was a l very bright light, and it it shined in my eyes. I don't know. I shot thunderbolts out of my hands for quite some time after that. It was crazy. It's a long story. Yeah, I hope we don't run into that again. Hmm. Something about a dark lord and Talos and mm, yes. I mean, although it does give me visions, <laughs> might have to try it out. Might. Just be very careful of it. <laughs> the uh, the walls to the lighthouse are very damp and weather-worn and stuff like that. Uh, but there are two windows 40 feet up off the ground. And then there is the giant window with the illuminating light at the top, which is about 60 feet high. Well, in through the front door? Hmm. Maybe, maybe we should look around first. I've, I've learned in my time that if you just go straight in, it might not be a good idea. Scout the area. Yes. I, I like it. We'll scout the area. Circle around the building. All right, so do some, uh, do some uh, perception just checks. Looking around. <laughs> some investigations. Investigation? I have a perception check that I've done on this back shed which is attached to the house, which lands it on the same insurance policy. Oh, you're looking Stealth at your checker. skills? You're looking for perception. Perception. Okay. Mine's a nine. 
seven. Yours is seven. So mine would be twenty-six. Twenty-three. Um, pretty much elf eyes. You find some junk, some ransacked stuff, like maybe people have thrown stuff out of the lighthouse. Um, there are like, like, uh, you find these tracks in the ground that are they're not human. They're almost uh, fish-like. Boy, have you ever seen something like this before? I have tracked many creatures in the forest, but this seems to have um, fins. Fins on land? Does it make any sense? It's very scary, something that can exist in the water and on the land. Very much so. Mm. Not something maybe I don't want to run into either. Well, we better prepare for it, that's for sure. I agree. I guess maybe we should go inside then. We'll go knock on the door. Very well. He'll uh, make, his, I'll make my way back to the house. Yeah, you guys, uh, if you want to remove the barricade, it's going to take a strength check. Hmm. Do you have anything that would help us get this off? In your gear, do you have a pack? I have a horn. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, <That works. laughs> let's try this, shall we? Okay, sounds and good. And I'm going to pull a uh, uh, rod out of my pocket that's about yay long. Okay. And it, and it extends out real long. He twirls it like all oh, fucking. He sticks it in, he's going to try and pry this thing out. <laughs> All right. Okay. And with that pole, he's able to get a 18. That's exactly what I was looking for. And you pop the pop the uh, the metal work that's holding it closed, and you're able to pry the door open enough that you guys would be able to fit through it if you'd like. Shh. It's toys. What toy is that? It's a collapsible rod. Collapsible rod. You mean like a wah, wah type of thing? No. Watch this. <laughs> and it just extends out and he hands it to you. It's just a long metal rod, but it ah. collapses. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my horn. <laughs> <laughs> so does she really blow that horn? <laughs> There's a door there if you like. You guys creep through the door. I imagine you're going as stealthily as possible. Stealthy. Uh, you see smashed barrels and chairs littering the floor of the main hall. There's tapestries with a uh, natalis sh shell symbol on it. Um, like it, seem it seems like that would be like the house sigil or whatever. Um, but a lot of the stuff, all the stuff, art and stuff has been pulled from the walls and shredded. In the room next to it, you can hear some people talking, but they're speaking a language that you may or may not know. What languages do you all speak? I understand Elven. Nope. I understand Orcish. I understand Common and Sylvan. Okay. Same. And here they talk about And uh, you don't understand what they're saying, Westar. But the more they talk, the more you realize they're speaking Aquin. And then you think to yourself, I know how to speak Aquin. You don't know where you learned it. You don't know how, but you know what they're talking about. And these fish-like people are talking about it. They're upset because someone's locked themselves up in the top tower, and they're trying to figure out how to get in there. Okay. And you recognize there's probably, and that because now you can understand what they're saying, and there's probably about six of them in there. So this might be sound strange. I don't know the language, but I understand it. If that makes any sense. And right now, they're saying that someone has been captured and is upstairs. Must be another part of your mysterious past. Maybe, possibly. But it's a bit weird that it's all trashed in here, yet there seems to be about 
six people in there. Mm. So I still think that we should be cautious about this. People or our well, of what happened? Friends of something. Mm. Doesn't like I said. I understand it. But then yeah. again, I don't know. It would be best if we moved forward without speaking. So, I shall make it so that we can speak without talking. How's that? I shall have to ask for your consent one more time. Listen, as long as it's not the boobs. <laughs> I assure you it's not. <laughs> he makes a connection with your mind. We can now speak to each other with telepathically. He'll say, can you hear my voice? I can't. And I'm not even moving my mouth. How about that? Now, let's go forward, shall we? How would you like to proceed? So, let me get the lay of the land. Does it it's sees it? I beat like, it. It's like let's say it's like a white house. Yeah, let's and say and in this case, the, there's stairs in the middle, and you guys are in this room, and you heard can, the mumbling in this room. So there would be okay. a door somewhere. So there's here. a door over here, and we kind of yeah. hear them on the other side. They're in there. They uh, probably don't anticipate anyone getting to the island because of the. They think they're outside. alone. Yes. They think they're and, alone. And if you want, you could you could say, "Hey, I I know Aquin now." <laughs> you know, just like the Matrix, like you know Kung Fu. It mm -hmm. just came to you. Boom. Put it in your shit. Okay. You speak Aquin. Um, I'm looking through my character sheet to see if there's anything that says I'm not an asshole. I mean, there's multiple ways to proceed. You could do whatever you want. Try sneak by, I'm going to go up to the door by. stealthily and see if it's open. Is it locked? Well, stealthily is going to involve a stealth roll. Yes. <laughs> My stealth roll shall be a 19. So you creep up to the door. It is open. It is not locked. No, it's not locked. It's okay, open. Okay, I want to... It's, it's open. Oh, it's open, open. Yes, okay, like yeah, I want to. The corner looking. Oh, yeah, I want to stay there. hidden. I'm going to use my wood elf feature to kind of st stay um, hidden. My cloak um, has a special ability. It can change like fashions, so I'm just going to turn it the color of the rooms that were around it. Pull it up gray. over my head. <laughs> pull up over my head. So yeah, it's kind of like naturally camouflaged. You mm -hmm. see this happen. He's going to peek in there to see what he sees. You see six eel-like people. Mm. And they're just, they're standing, they're sitting at a table and they're jabbering. Um, you can't understand what they're saying. There are six of them. But you do notice that they have the symbol of Talos on them. They bear the mark of a very evil god. They are my sworn enemies. I believe that we can take them together. You also know there's stairs that you could get to without having to get past them if you wanted to. We could pass by, but we could possibly take these quick. You remember what I said about killing needlessly? This I do not mind killing. They've done you wrong, so, mate, I don't think anything's wrong. Let's go ahead. They do the world wrong. Then I'm up for a challenge. Do you want to flank them on both sides? Go from the other side. Or we can stay together. Well, you want me to go in the room and then... How do you want to proceed? You're already in the room, correct? I'm here on this door. Uh -huh. You could go to that door. Is there a door on the other side sure. too? Okay. You take him from one side and I'll take him from the other. Now, Meet since I kind of understand, do you want me to interact and ask him anything or do you want to just go for attack? You could gain their attention hmm. and then I'll sneak attack them. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and, is the door locked? No, all okay. the doors are open. I'm going to go ahead and just crack the door, just it's stealthily, open. okay. I'm going to walk right in and I'm just going to be like, Oi mates, how are you doing? <laughs> and I'm just going to start these bug-eyed, eel-like guys look at you. What? What the hell? <laughs> and then I'm just going to be like in disgust, like, Ugh! like not expecting that. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to distract them, and I'm going to start talking to them, like, 
Oh, like, are they wearing any clothes, or are they just like eels talking? Please uh, speak awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a persuasion, uh, so they know if they should be scared or friendly or what. <laughs> What are you doing on the other side? <laughs> He'll come in and yeah. hit him from behind. Okay. He's gonna make a. Uh, uh, he comes in and just this gr green flowing light comes from his hand and it extends this blade and it flies off of his hand and hits one of them. Okay, okay. if I can. Well, yeah, I mean, you get the surprise attack. They're the mortal enemies of like the natural world. Okay. Alright. Ooh, alright. He did that and I'm still trying to comment on his uh Talos represents the opposite of what the Emerald Enclave stands for. Okay, gotcha. They were all at a table. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta get the music going. There you go. Yeah, much better. There we go. Shit. I'll redo it. I'll so go. You okay, go ahead. Westar comes in the back as she was doing this and shoots a psychic blast out of his hand and hits him for, I don't know, 17, 17 damage. damage. Yeah. All right, roll for initiative then. Psychic damage. Because he screams out in pain. 23. All right. 19. No, no, yeah. 19. Yep. I got a 19 plus 8. 19 plus 8? So 27. 27. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. All right. Well, get after it. <laughs> <laughs> You're up first, man. So now, the... the, the be wise. So at this point, I know right away my friend is already taking a hit. He said they're bad guys. Going to be like, oh, you're not nice. And then uh, I go ahead and uh, take out the uh, sword. For the and record, you guys attacked them. <laughs> or just you know, if the police ask, we did. <laughs> you did. I'm just, I was going to try to talk to them. <laughs> nice ladies, not nice. <laughs> so I'm going to go for the sword, and I'm just going to attack. Right. Um, for this guy right in, right here. Okay. Ten, ten, 24. 24 hits. Okay. Okay, so is 1d6. 1d6? Yep. Plus 1d8. Because it's your first attack. Yep. Trying to get that. There we go. So it's just. It's these plus, so five. Where's your short sword at? Oh, yeah, right. Okay. All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Ten. Yep. Ten damage. Ten no, it's, damage. It's like plus this, right? No. It's plus this. Oh, sorry. It's plus that. It's ten. So ten. You have two more attacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're using your sword on them? I'm stabbing them. Okay. Stabby. Yep. Stabby. I'm getting stabby with them because they're, they're like blubbery and yeah. wet and. Gross looking. They look like eels almost. Like we could call them eel folk folk. Yep, okay. Six. They have to eels. Um, Twenty no, eighteen, sorry. It hits. So then it's just my D6, right? Nine. What's the five? It's fourteen. Okay. So you stab into this this creature and you kind of feel like a tingle in your fingers oh. as you pull your sword out. Oh shit. And the creature has all this pent up electricity <coughs> inside of it. Oh, yeah. And it explodes. Uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Ten. 
Ten. Ten. That's total. Or right. Your dexterity is higher than that. Wait, hold on. You rolled a ten, but your dexterity no, saves. No, five. Oh, you rolled a five, so plus your dexterity save is here. Oh, okay, so not mod Okay, I see how you're doing it now. Okay. okay. So it's 14. So, he uh, explodes in lightning, and you're able just to twirl around, flip around out of the way as he blows up, and his body just, electricity pulsates through it as he falls to the ground dead. Okay, so I'm not going to do that anymore. So I turn to you and I scream at you. <laughs> <coughs> Range! You, you, you hear it. In your head and out of her mouth. <laughs> it's in stereo. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> it's some padded in critical role fighting music now. So the one you got, he's wounded. You can kind of start, you get the idea that the electricity is already starting to generate him. He'll take a step back. And he will, um... Whoosh, he's just gonna, a regular attack. Throw, throws a, a mind beam into him. Okay. For, uh, the attack is 11 plus. Um, 7, so 18. Hits. And that's gonna be 10... Psychic damage to him. Is the one that you were fighting earlier? Yes, this one. So, yes, he's dead. As you throw the psychic in, he bursts into an electrical field. Uh, the radius is 10 feet. So, 5, 10. Yep. Am I in it? No, you're out of it. So, you're able to. What about them? <laughs> they're immune to it. Okay. Because they're part of it. It pulsates through their bodies. I'll just play it. What else you got? Uh, well, I have a um, bonus action that I can take advantage of. I think what I'll do is, let's see, I was, sorry, I think I moved five feet, mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 35, I can get, I'm going to dash over to Jura. So you hop on the table. Yes. Flip over there. Oh, back over this way. I'm gonna <laughs> double back. Oh, you go back through the back door. Yeah, but double back because I didn't want to run through the middle of them. So you did a dash action so you could get double movement. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm on your six. That oh, means behind you. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Thanks. I wasn't used to you. I was attacking. You're gonna let me know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stop with the sword because I all of a sudden. Well, these, unfortunately, these guys get to attack. Oh yeah, I, I know it's 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 very nice to you, but they're gonna get a shot to do something other than stand around this beautiful uh, marble table. <laughs> cook, us, cook us like shish kebabs. <laughs> uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So he's gonna do the lunge action to get right at you. So he hops right at you with his knife in his hand, and he's going to attack you. With the, with the lunge action. So, it's going to be uh, 10 to hit. No. All right. So, he just lunges but misses you. The one next to you, Juro, is going to go ahead and attack. That's that's also a 10 to hit. Well, that won't hit her. So, this one or hops on the 17. table. Hops over right there. 17. <laughs> now, the next one is going to hit you with a uh, 17. 17 to hit. Oh, on the nosy. Okay. On the nose. So then you're going to take three points slashing damage. And Damn then, you! <coughs> uh, hop over towards you. <coughs> That's going to be seven. He's not going to hit. That's so not. these guys don't. They, they're they're running around. It's back to the front. You're up, Miss MJ. All right. Um, now can I? You can do anything you want. Okay. I'll just tell you what you got to roll to do it. Yep. I'm gonna use my aerobotics. Okay. And I'm going to basically jump over these guys, kind of do a little alley oop uh -huh. right behind them. And I want to back up enough to where I can use my bow. Okay. So once you, you can flip over them. Mm -hmm. If you back up, they're gonna get a chance to, to swing at you. Okay. You can do that, but it will, if you get any further than five feet away from them, it, it, it encourages but a opportunity attack. Okay. They just attacked you and you saw what they rolled. Out of three, out of four of them, only one was able to hit. Okay. So I'm just gonna do the I'm gonna do the 
aerobatics. Okay. I would jump behind them. Hop on the, flip behind onto the table so you, you hopped up on the table because it's there. <laughs> Got it. And I'm still, so right over top of them, I'm still going to take the sword out then. Uh-huh. And I'm going to go right for the damn head. You flip over the black <laughs> <laughs> They're all over me. And that is an 11. 11. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. 14. 14. 14 will not hit. Yeah. Wah, wah. It's for you. You can change your uh, attack once per turn. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause I missed. It's like the, it's like the halfling feature only for an elf. That is 22. Mm-hmm. Definitely hits. I go right in for it. <gasps> All right. What do you do? What do you hit? Roll I'm going your... right for the guy with yeah, the whip. Yeah, roll hit. Roll a d6. Roll your damage. A six. Six demos. <laughs> Would be a lot more if you were doing Hunter's, Hunter's Mark. Mark. I know. No. She could always do whatever. She could retroactively do it. I don't care. Put the Hunter's Mark. You can do yeah. it. You got you got spells. We got a little days. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Next time. Mm-hmm. Alright. Well in that case, those two are gonna attack you, Chad. Ooh, that one's Is it my turn yet? Oh I'm sorry, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. They wanna attack you. They want to so bad. Barnacles. <laughs> Barnacles. <laughs> Bam. Okay. I'm going to use my elven accuracy this time, I believe. Not my elven accuracy, my, my roguish accuracy. And this long green psychic blade shoots out of my hand. And that's going to be the same that I had to hit last time. So it's 18 to hit. 18 hits. So with sneak attacks. That's gonna be five, nine, eleven, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one damage to this guy on the right. Uh, so as you you kill him, he starts to erupt the electricity. Can I get my uh, bonus action in? Before uh, he blows up, or is it too quick? Sure, go ahead. Um, Make it cool. He's going to, uh, he, as he stabs this thing into him, uh, yeah. its eyeballs jiggle yes. because his brain is fried, but that, with that, the electricity starts to come out of him, and he starts to go, oh, shit. And just as the other one comes in with a sword, he uses his bonus action to do a disengage and do like a backflip and land on his hands and then push up to push away the, the ten feet. Okay. Bah! <laughs> and he's, he explodes, or the electricity explodes, and his brain seeps out his head and all over the wall. Rogues are good at hitting things and then running away. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. All right. That's his turn. He's going to do the lunge action again. That's eight. That's not going to hit. These two are going to turn around. Get down from there. Ooh. It's 18 to hit on the first one. Ooh. And then um, 22 to hit on the second one. So I'm imagining both, both of them hit. Yes, it is. Ooh. Seven on the first one and uh, two on the second. So that's eight points slashing damage. They're slashing at you with their little daggers. <laughs> Cute minis. Bastards. <laughs> We're back to you. All right. I'm going to throw the... Good old Hunter's Mark on this guy. There he goes, Hunter's Mark. Right. Yay! Huzzah! <laughs> Put your pants on the bottom legs. <laughs> <laughs> kind of likes it ring. <laughs> and I'm going to go for, um, even though I put it on Hunter's Mark on that guy, can I go for the other guy? You can go for both of them, but you're gonna be, it would be a waste for you to hit the other guy. Uh, yeah, mark. Well, yeah. yeah. You kill one and then move the hunter's mark, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, best. I can do that. Okay. Yes. All right, cool. That's all I needed then. All right, so then I'm going to go for the hunter's mark, dude. And um, one still with the sword. Crit. Aza! So what would that In one stereo. on that one? What did you do? So you double your d6 for the sword. Mm -hmm. I okay. apologize. And then I have another one. This one for you the, have for the hunter's, for mark. hunter's mark, but you're gonna double that one too, so it's 46. Oh, okay, okay. 
the most I've ever had. It's very exciting. All oh right, yeah. So, so these are both 12, 17, 18, um, 18. Plus five? Uh huh. Yep, 18. 23. So this, <laughs> you, oh, since you did a crit, tell me how this looks. Okay, okay. So then at this point, I'm just going to, can I, can I make a move? Like as you're killing, but as you're killing to make the move. Tie it all together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all okay. together. All right. How does this critical kill on him look? Since we're doing all these aerobatics, yeah. you know, I'm going to do a jump over a loop right behind him. And he's going to go <laughs> looking at me because it's like, where did she go? <laughs> and then I'm just going to go. Because I'm doing this whole head thing right now, so <laughs> right in the head, and it's, how does nice. he look? <laughs> yeah, and I'll say with the, with the 20, you know enough to kick him out, and he slides up underneath the table, and you see lightning <laughs> splinter the table apart, <laughs> and jelly goes everywhere. Yes, <laughs> so I'm not even gonna make you make the decks on that one. And you want to move your hunter's mark over to him, correct? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. And so you're right there, ready for it? Can she do a second attack? <laughs> Actually, you couldn't put that on her yet. Okay. Because you used the bonus action to cast it. Okay. But next turn you can. Yep. Okay. Got it. All right. But she still can do another attack, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Ew. Come on. I'm going for that and then go for one. That is a 10. Just a 10? It's just a 10. 10 will not hit. Is this the? Have you used that feature in this turn? What? To to make an attack hit? Was that or that last turn? That's you can reroll one attack per turn. No, it was with this one. Okay, I so did. then yeah, you can't no. do it again. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, That's angered it. by seeing his friend, <laughs> his friend named Fishy. <laughs> God damn it, Chad! Turn. You always want to take your turns. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you and your turns. You're taking all the fun out of Ruth's cozy kitchen. <laughs> you and your turns, Chad. God damn it. I roll an eight to hit this guy in front of me. It'll be a 15 to hit. 15 hits. Okay. It's 10 damage to him. All right. So he just <laughs> sticks him once. Uh, he shakes a little bit. And he brings up the other hand. <laughs> tries to stick in the second one and that one's going to be uh, 19 to hit that is. the second blade isn't as tough <laughs> but it's gonna be six damage to him all right you 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 are able to take him out okay so he goes that one side takes up the other hand and goes and feel. makes like an X the Talos <laughs> electricity pulsating through yeah. those and his eyeballs just kind of like pulse real heavy, and like the veins get real tight in it in this thing. But then it goes. Ugh. Well, he's gonna Maybe explode. a little nosebleed. That's fine. I don't have a bonus action. All right. Left. So give me a dex check as he explodes. My dexterity is going to ball a thirteen. So you're able. How do you get away from that blast? Then just tell me. So as for, he goes, as he body. falls down, he like he's getting a little nosebleed and like uh, he's like vomits electricity and like explodes and I like do a little twirl and like go oh, yes I got it but I do trip and fall through the front door whoa <laughs> maybe my hair is like sticking up a little bit because it was like close <laughs> so this one's gonna attack you with a fourteen all right no okay so he swipes at you angrily. I gotta go get help. And he's gonna try to run up to the stairs. So you're gonna get an opportunity to attack if you'd like. Okay. Try and take one of them alive, I say in my mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, okay. Well, so you get to just attack when you want to, and I gotta, like. <laughs> this is all going on in y'all's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's an argument that's going yeah. on. Yeah. Argument. You just get to kill everything. I'm just trying to talk to him, and then you just, like. Um, yeah, for a okay. minute, you're like, I miss my old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, nobody misses weapons. Okay, I do have a rope with me, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to try to lasso him. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't do that? You could still kill him, 
but just say non-lethal damage. I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so okay, for, yeah you could do that. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So because he's trying to flee from you, first you get an opportunity of attack. So this is a bonus attack for you to use. Okay. This is not your turn. Okay. So you can attack him if you'd like to right you now. Use your reaction to make an attack on him. Okay. So I'm not going to kill him though, because you could say you I want to chop his legs off. I want to. Yeah. I want to. You know, you say pin, him, pin him to the damage. wall or yeah. something. But okay. you got You got to roll. You always have that option. It got it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just. Uh, I'm going to chop off his hand. All right. So you're going to aim for his hand mm -hmm. with your reaction attack. Thirteen. So he's at full health right now. So reaction attack. Oh, with, yeah. still with my sword. Or? It's a reaction with your sword. Yeah. Okay. All right. And that is a. A 22. Okay, that hits. Okay. Seven. All right. So as you as he turns to leave, you go to try to slash his hand, but you miss it quite, and you cut his leg, and he kind of hobbles a little bit. Now it's your turn. If you'd like to chase him down, he's still got some HP, so you haven't got him pinned. Now it is your turn. Oh, my turn. Yes. Okay. Because he ran away from you, you've okay. got an opportunity of attack. And then, of course, I'm a bastard. So then um, I'm going to dart for him. I'm going to go ahead and uh, slash the other leg. Okay. Just... Okay. Four. And that is a 13. 13 will not hit. Oh. You can use that feature one time. Oh, yeah. Even worse. And even worse. You wah, get a wah. second attack, though. Huh? I do? Use your second attack. Ooh, 17. And 17 is, will hit. No, no, it's actually a um, 26. You don't need a rope. And you can use your hit. bonus. <laughs> first, you would use your bonus attack. Your bonus action, I should say, to move this in here. Okay. Because the new turn started, you could do that. Mm -hmm. So now, when if, if you hit him with this attack... What, did you well, hit? she hit him. Oh, okay, yeah. Roll so roll with your damage with your with your with your stuff. It is a six plus okay. another d six because the hunter's mark. Okay. Oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm not even adding the five to it. So that was eleven. Yeah. And then uh, and then, then it would be four. Uh, Over. Now you rolled a one on the one d six, right? Yeah, but then I was supposed to d six. Add. I wasn't adding the five. That was why. Well, you said six. Huh? You said it was six damage, right? No, it was a five. Oh, I was just rolling right, this. I didn't right, right. Okay, sorry. You chop Whatever. his other leg and he crumbles in the stairway so and can't move any forward because you're saying non-lethal damage. Yes. So he's bleeding out, but he is in the staircase. Stop, stop it, stop it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> React! <laughs> That's your cue. So then I can just grab the rope that you I want to you use. Want. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap him up and lasso him. We're doing cool. all this like aerobatics. Go fish on me! <laughs> if I had a fishing pole, I'd do that. <laughs> Loop him in, and then I said, I got you, man. What is he saying? <laughs> if you can understand him. That blah, blah. Ask him what he's doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna go <coughs> quick as there's a glass of water. Grab the glass of water, put it in my mouth, and go. <laughs> <"Bloo, bloo, bloo." laughs> well, I mean, I'm kind of yeah, because they spit all over you when they're talking to you. So I talk to him and I ask him. <laughs> Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Well, if I was gonna kill you, I would have ought to killed you. Look around the room. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Really? <laughs> I can't tell. But not really. At this point, sir, the only thing you can tell me is who are you? What are you guys doing here? We're, we're, we're worship Talos, the storm god. They turn to you. He commanded we take over the tower. And. We can't get the, the guy out of the roof. So I turn to you and I say, I say all that, you know, you already told me that they're the, and then I say, there's also still the guy that's upstairs that's locked away. And they're going there and they're also taking over the, the Maybe lighthouse. We can work together. You, you can talk to the bowl. He's saying something about a bowl that I can talk to. 
Ask him where it is, what it is. Grab a glass of water again. <laughs> the bowl. Where's the bowl? The bowl's in the caverns. It's in the caverns. What does it do? What does the bowl do? It commands the water. Commands the water. Oh, it's like that thing out there. Mm. Out in the water. That's what's going on. I think we have this culprit. Let me go now. I told you everything. What else is he saying? <laughs> what did he say? He's, he's, what, he's begging for his life. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> what do you want to do with this bastard? Kill him or let him go? If he will assist us, then we can promise to let him go. But he must renounce Talos. What? He must renounce Talos. First, you must renounce Talos. And at that point, if you could please help us, we'll then release you. No! Talos rules! We must kill the bastard. I thought you were going to say, he totally renounced Talos! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's withering in the ropes. Tell me you're back to the sea. My fair sea. I'm not one for executions. I know I just killed a bunch of his friends. But he's mortally wounded and he did give us some help. I'll let him free or you can slice his throat. It means it makes no difference to me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn to the guy and... I'm going to stab him in the heart and kill him. How does this look? <laughs> Again, aerobatics, flip over, <laughs> take my Jesus road Christ. off, and stab him <laughs> right in the heart. And then I'm going to look to you and I'm going to be like, sorry. This could have been messy later. We clean our messes here. Very good. All right. The stairs lead up. I don't see any entryways to any caverns. It only goes up. He did say that there's someone trapped upstairs. Hmm. Well, shall we? I think we should just go up there and take a look. Let's go. All right. You want points or shall I? I'll, you lead the way. Very well. Now we'll go forward. Uh, you reach this top of the stairs and there's like an iron grate there and you can tell it's barricaded. Shall we knock? A lot of knocking it done earlier. I think we're past that point. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? My name is Navik Delundelial Novasik. I am a wood elf, and I have come here to rescue the men who were under attack by a sea monster. Are you... Lucian Skyporn? Are you Lucian Skyporn? It's pronounced Skyhorn. Porn? Skyhorn. <laughs> yes, I, I am. Here, and you can hear the bolts. And he's gonna let you guys up into the uh, to the top of the uh, tower. Oh, man. Nice, that nice baby. Good. Door opened and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were being attacked. <laughs> I should roll on the ground. <laughs> and he, uh, you see this wild, white-haired, gray-eyed man. He's short in stature. He's got bushy eyebrows. I never thought anybody would come. Oh, did my seagull get to you? I said like twenty of them. We did receive a message from a seagull. Well, one of the bastards stole my baguette. <laughs> you owe her a baguette. <laughs> I've been living off of good berries for weeks now. I don't have baguettes, but that sounds delicious. Good I mean, days. this is, after all, a, a lighthouse and not a cafe. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you are free. The creatures who 
inhabited the bottom floor are now been slain. No, oh, they still command the, the seas. They, they snuck in that night and took over the grotto underneath the, the tower. And I barricaded myself in here. They, they're using the bowl. My family has been entrusted to control the bowl of elemental control for, for, for millennia. And we use it to help ships that are lost at sea or are going to sink. We could save sailors. Uh, but the bowl is a dangerous weapon. Uh, the eel folk realize that the elemental will turn on them if they are not intelligent enough. So they've been kidnapping merchants to control the bowl. They did mention that bowl. Quite a few times. They were trying to get it to work. We must, you must... You must f free any of the hostages and remove them from controlling the device. Only then will Skyhorn be free. <coughs> I'm sorry, you don't have any wine up here. I'm still choking on seawater. I've been living off of elderberries, good berries. Where might this bowl be? It's underneath the foundation here. Does it have access to it? Yes, there's a secret passage on the bottom floor. I can show you where it is. Yes. Take us there. All right, do you That's got any once. food on you? I have rations. What are you eating right now? And he gives you his nerds. <laughs> Wait a second. Here you go. I seize it, so off. you better bees it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one more time. Tastes like the heat. <laughs> Still <laughs> eating on those things. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Let's go. You make good berries too. Mm-hmm. And there's some uh, boxes and crates he pushes mm. out of the way. And there's a secret door that you guys can go through downstairs. So you guys go down a rusty ladder. It takes you ten feet down from the trap door. And you smell like briny water all over the ground and whatnot. And you hear, you can hear the crash of the tide echoing through this cavernous area you're in. Um, and there's all this water out here that leads out to uh, leads out to the ocean and this little cove and then there's like a room off to this side and the door is closed. How would you like to proceed? Now you know that they've been capturing pirates and if I was a great DM I would have laid into the fact that the Jade Lion ship, merchant ship, had went missing just recently. But from what uh, the fish man told him before you murdered him, um, he said, oh hey, Congratulations, you're officially a murder hobo. <laughs> you did it. Achievement unlocked. You did it. Yep. And uh, they have to use humans t to control the ship because it causes them, the elemental turns against them. Uh, so they've been kidnapping vessels with the creature and having that to control the creature. All right. He told all of you that in Aquan. Yep. As in his last dying breath. He didn't say anything about his kids or his wife that was back home. They just, they just laid some eggs, and they were hoping to raise a family, God willing. They're all filthy Talos worshippers. <laughs> all right. A bowl. I will just proceed to walk calmly through this cavern and explore it. Yeah. Ooh, could Echoing be treasures. The, tower, the light shine. Mm -hmm. Came to a good treasure down here. I will, um, ex so it's not C's it, B's it, so I don't want to, like, just assume, but... There is the water elements are there, and the stairs do lead into the water. The water is the way to get to the boat, if you'd like. There's also a room off to the side there. We'll go check out that room to the side. I'm just checking my, uh, equipment. I'm going to go in there. So you get to the door. Mm -hmm. There's a doorway. The door's closed. Locked. Yes. <laughs> I would like to attempt my thieves' tools okay. to unlock the door. 
We'd certainly try. Uh, the door, there's the same uh, Natalis shell carved on the door. Hmm. Okay. Could be more eels looking things. I got 21 to unlock the door. Nope. I take these two, like, pins, and I crunch them together, and I twist until I hear a crunk. And I unlock the door, and I slowly push it open to see who's in there. I wonder if my socks will do that. <laughs> you, really? see, you see a, a multitude of humans chained up, and uh, give me a stealth roll. It's going to be a flippin' 29. Well, there's two eel folks sitting at the table playing dice. I said at 25. Oh, nice. <laughs> they didn't see you. Can the humans see me? Uh, sure, yeah. I'll roll, see if the humans perceive. So a couple of the humans look over at you. I'll go like this. Shh. <laughs> 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 Okay. And there's just two eels. When I look around the room, two eel folk, yeah. They're actually, I would put them on there. They're fairly near the door. I'd say they're kind of just not doing their job. Um, spread some humans in there if you like, just to give it the feel. I look at you and I go, I see two enemies. Shall we synchronize a shot? Be better than the baseball and the apple. The <laughs> mental connection is still attached, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's going um, to take his bow out mm -hmm. and then do an arrow. Okay. And, so he's the same. Gonna, and he's going to draw a bead and we're going to... Both at the same time, aim for the heads. Love it. On the count of three. One, two, three. The fact that you guys did it at the same time is great. <laughs> yeah. Here goes two natural 20s. It's going to be... Um... I have 25. That hits. 22. That hits. So the two arrows go in, one of them just goes and it goes between his eyes and he slumps over and the dice fall forward. on his hand. <laughs> and the other guy's like, what happened to you? But there's like an arrow sticking out his neck. <laughs> Say it right, Chad. <laughs> That's gross. Right. Um, he is going to immediately try to bolt to it. There's a second doorway he's going to try to get to. So he's going to start running. All right, do we have time to react or do anything? Yes, yep, I'll let you guys, because he's going to take his turn to dash. So you are the one who gets two attacks on your action, so maybe you should be the one to take the second shot. All right, sounds good. His dash allows him to go 60 feet, so he's not quite I'm not quick enough to shoot two arrows. We're going to say the doorway is at the end of this hallway here, okay? okay. So he's just mad So this dash. is a reaction. Can I, in a reaction, can this I do this? This is not a non-combat thing, uh -huh. so you can... Uh, I don't know about the... Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll check that. I don't know if you're still running. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. He's getting close to the door. Okay. Sometimes you got to play fast and loose. You do what's cool. I say take the attack. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... He was going to use his turn to run anyway, so... Okay. Give it, give it so a... I'm just going to take out another arrow, since uh -huh. now I'm embarrassed. Is a 30. A 
30. That does hit. That does hit. <laughs> Just barely. Just barely, I guess. 30 hits him and his friends. <laughs> um, at 12. Generation. 12. Okay, so 12 is enough to kill him. So you kind of, it skewers him to the doors. He's getting to the door. Just and then as I release that, I look at you and go. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> I'm going to enter into the cavern and uh, begin going oh, up to let me, the... Let me put the captain here. Sorry. Captain. Which one of you is the captain? That would be me. I'm the captain. Well, Captain, shall we get you and your men free? I know. Don't worry about me. My name is Arian Hest, by the way. You must go in the other room and stop them. They are taking my people there, having them control the elemental. You can see he's got lots of uh, electrical burns and stuff on him like they've been torturing him. They've been torturing You must stop them from the ritual. They're going to summon a water elemental here and kill us all. Are the keys on this guy? Uh, sure. Sure. I'll toss him the keys. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. unlock one of his hands and go and give him the key and go. I'll get my people. You must stop them. I will. Before I go, tell everyone that Navik de Lundelai on Novasik Westar, the bear kissed, saved you. Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> What was your name? Jura. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna stop stop you and be like, don't let your head catch you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> I just have an extremely long name. Mm-hmm. You probably do too. You just don't know it. It's an Eladrin custom. <laughs> Fine with just Jira. Wow. Uh, JJ, just Jira. <laughs> that'll be your new, that'll be your new catchphrase. Yeah. Just Jira. Just Jira. <laughs> hmm. Clever, your name is of the sea. Weren't you not plucked from the sea? I was. With my bow. Aptly named Jura. And your name? Navik de Lundelail Novasik. Yes, that. Yes. <laughs> it is a combination of my mother and father's families, but my call sign is Westar. Which is what you may call me. It's much simpler. Are you best for short? No one has ever done that, but I will allow you. At least remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you go to that door, and it's more of a makeshift door. Like, this is a section of the cavern that was never there. Uh, it has been added. So this room leads into, when you open the door up, to a cave, and you kind of realize that maybe that this tower is built on an ancient area, and that's how this is here. And uh, these guys are prepared for you. We're going to roll for initiative. I'm going to. I got a whopping 20. 12. Okay, 25 20. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's. No, no, I didn't get that. No. 20 to 15? Um, I got a 12. Okay. Eleven. You guys, this time we're going last. Oh, damn. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The one time we should have gone first. Yep. Um, so you come in there, and it's a crumbling round-like chamber. Uh, there's a shimmering water bowl set in the cracked alabaster tiles in the back of this cavern. That is the bowl of commanding water elements. Uh, there's a rather large eel folk uh, screaming at a human, a terrified sailor who's kneeled in front of the bowl. Uh, and there's other eel folks scattered all around the room uh, watching and participating in this ritual. And they turn to you, and in this case, they're going to have like crossbows. 
So uh, we're just going to say uh, three of them are going to attack each of y'all. So the first okay. one. First one's going to be. Twenty-one to hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, take uh, six points of piercing damage. Okay. Second one's gonna hit you with. He's gonna shoot you with a fifteen. No. Uh, okay. Well, that will go to her. Yeah, we'll go back to you for the next one. <laughs> Twenty to hit. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so take. <laughs> now we'll go back to you. <laughs> uh, eighteen to hit. Yes. So you're going to also take six points damage. So I take another six? To her now. You, you've you got hit twice now, so it's 12. She's just got hit once. Okay. Last attack on you, that's a, that's 22 to hit, so that's going to be another six points. Okay. Some damage. On her, that's going to be, uh, uh, be nine to hit. No. Okay. I don't mark you. I don't mark you. Okay. And so this big one turns around at you. And he calls forth lightning. He's going to cast Call Lightning. 120 feet. It's going to go toward you guys. Uh, it's a, a storm cloud appears in the shape of a cylinder that is 10 feet tall and 60 foot radius. So it's going to be right around you guys. Uh, uh, so he's picked the point he wants to. Uh, you guys need to do a dexterity saving throw. So this cloud appears above you, the lightning, the, the, the vestige of the anger of Talos reigns upon y'all. 24. Alright, 24, what you get? 15. Alright, you both passed, um, and he got, he did uh, 15 points of damage, so we're going to half it because you both succeeded, so that means you're going to take, and it always goes up, so you're going to take... Eight. Eight points of lightning damage. So you'll get zapped for eight points of lightning damage. Yes. Everyone except me. Because I'm a rogue. And when I pass a dexterity saving throw and would take half, half damage at level seven, I can instead take no damage. Cool. So he zips out of the way. And he can control... <clears throat> That's what rogues do. He, can, he controls that cloud above y'all. But he has to maintain concentration to help keep that spell where he wants it. Okay. So rogue now, is like cooking with bacon. Rogues are just dodgy. Because if man. he lands a hit, it does hurt me real bad. <laughs> yes. They have things that they're squishy, but they they have ways of getting out of the way. You are up, ma'am. All right, I am going to. At that point, I'm like, whoa. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, can I? Can you jump on these, or is this just like? Oh, I'm gonna pretend like. I'm going to pretend like these are to the roof, are okay. to the roof. but the other ones are like half cover and stuff like if that. If I were you, I'd start spitting out hunter's marks and all that kind of stuff. And this is where I use half cover, Chad. Okay. Tell me I'm not a good teacher. Come on, yep, man. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to go ahead and throw my hunter's mark on this guy yep. closest to me. All right, great. And I'm going to go ahead and take out my bow, uh -huh. and I'm just going to go for it because I know how these guys are. Mm -hmm. These guys look a little bit more sophisticated than the ones you fought earlier. Oh. They a got little bit better more, armor. Yeah, they look a little bit more fiercer. They're not the peons they left outside. Um, that is a 16. 16 will hit. All right. That's going to be Hunter's Mark. So I get Actually, they have less armor. They just seem a little bit more able-bodied. Okay. Fast movers. D8. They're buff. Yeah. Right, so it's a so I'd use a D8, and then with my Hunter's Mark, it's a D6. <coughs> yes. Yep. Okay. A D6, so yeah. So it's a, it's a 6. Is that is attack. 12. 12, okay. your first attack. Mm -hmm. It's also another D8. It is? Yeah, why so is that? Attack. Why is that? On your first attack. Okay, I didn't Remember? know that. Yes, you, yeah, you did. Okay. You've been doing it every turn. Okay. That is your every battle, I mean to say. Your okay. Ranger Doom Stalker, that's your first turn of every battle. Okay. That's it. It's one time. I wasn't doing that the whole time, damn it. You did last time. I made you do it. Oh, you did? Okay. Yep. So, so add, what did I say before? That was 12. I already got what you got before. Just give me Okay, that. two more. Add two more. Okay. Now you get two more attacks because it's your okay. first attack. He does not look bloody. Oh, damn. Damn. <laughs> so you can hit attack him twice more. So then it's just going to be because I have him. You got to roll your d20 first. Oh, yeah. Same. Uh, that same would be 16. 
16 will hit. 5, 6, 7. It is a 12. 12 damage. Alright, he is bloodied. Now you get one more attack. My little table set up. 25. 25 hits. Um, that is 21. 21 damage? Yes. Woo! He blows up in a burst of electricity. He's gone. Oh. All right. On your next turn, you can uh, move that around. Okay. All right. Awesome. You have concentration on you, though. Now, just like like he's got concentration, you got concentration. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to hit you, you would have to roll a dice. Okay. And it is either you got to roll better than a 10, or if the damage is higher, you got to roll better than the damage you took. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's like half the damage or something like that. Yeah, so like if you hit her with a 15, higher. she's got to roll better than a 15. Mm -hmm. All right, Chad, you are up. These guys are significantly stronger. It's uh, half the damage of whatever you took, whichever is higher, 10 okay. or, or half the damage. Right. So if you hit her with 30, we round it down to 15. And then she has to roll higher than 15. 15. Yep. Yeah. Okay. These guys are significantly tougher. Not only do these guys look tougher, but these guys look a little bit different. Okay. They look uh, a little bit more vicious, a little okay. bit more scourgy. Okay. These guys ate the Wheaties. They ate their Wheaties indeed. Um, Remember, there's that cloud above y'all. Okay. Westar twirls over here next to his friend, but before he does, he threw something right in the middle of these motherfuckers. Okay. okay? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. They gotta make dexterity saving throws. Okay. Woo. I got a three and I got a nine. That's gonna fail both times. Okay. You got three D sixes I can borrow. Of course. <laughs> okay, that's nine, twelve, thirteen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty. No, oh, so thirty-one. 31 damage. Explosion of fire happens between them. And a fireball just explodes between them and the flames go all through the caverns. Yeah. Okay. That's my turn. <laughs> hey! <laughs> they are... Dude, there is a fish fry going on. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not dead. They're not oh, dead. Oh, oh, they're, oh, okay. they're, they're melty, but they're no, not dead. They, they're smelling good. They smell like fish ticks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got anything else? <laughs> That's it. I got one action. Um, All right. I don't have a bonus action that I need really to do. All we need is potatoes. So he's so moving. Have... He's gonna use move the cloud over to you guys, and he's gonna hit you guys again. You gotta give me a dexterity saving throw. Nah. Twenty-six. <laughs> natural one. <laughs> Twenty-six. Okay, so you passed. You failed. So the total damage he did was 13. Woo! So you're gonna take half of that. This time it hits him. So that's gonna be seven. So you get hit by the light. You feel the Talos smashing into you. But he remembers that he has the Talos power inside him and he uses reaction to half that damage. All right. All right, so seven. 13, so seven. Yep. <laughs> now these other creatures are gonna uh, take their shots. Uh, I'm gonna, these two are just gonna attack Chad real quick. Um, one was, uh, uh, ten. No. And I apologize. Um, these scourges, they are vicious. They're like animals. <laughs> they get up on you. Mm -hmm. He gets two attacks. So his first attack <coughs> was a, uh, a twenty with his bite. Yeah. So you're going to take nine points of piercing damage. And then he's going to claw attack you. Oh, I'm sorry. Makes three attacks. 
First one's gonna be uh, 22. Yeah. So you're gonna take uh, um, nine points slashing damage. The next attack is a 17. Yeah. We'll be dead. No. 11 points slashing damage. That's insane. That's insane. He's, He's tough. Very tough. I'm almost dead. One more. He goes one more time. I'm dead. Not dead yet. Yep. <laughs> Not dead yet. The other two um, are going to the the burning ones are going to swing shoot at you. My fish and chips over there. Yeah. Yep. So I've got a 15. Okay. Does that? Nope. Hit? Okay. And the other one's got a um, 22. Yes. So you're going to take. Uh, I'll just roll it. 1d8. You take six points damage. And then uh, Scourge is gonna move. He's gonna move. Yep. That's a bit. Yep. All right. It is now your turn, ma'am. Okay. Boy, oh boy. All right. This guy's a tough. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Should I do anything with you being so low? Uh, I don't know what you would do. What do you got? That would be one of my... That would be my thing, though. Couldn't do anything Yeah, else. don't worry about it. Kill, kill, kill. Okay, all right. Kill everything in sight. All right, um... At this point, I'm going to... The Scourge make three attacks, so you might want to focus on them guys first. Yeah. They're I'm... the ones with the whips. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, um... I'm gonna conjure the animals. We need help. You should yeah. conjure the animals. <laughs> <laughs> so you somehow you have this. You, you reach out to some other plane, mm -hmm. and an octopus appears wherever you want it to be. Wherever he fits, right? So yep. it goes right behind maybe these yep. guys. Yep. Okay. So then don't have to roll. Uh, now we're talking. Training continues. Okay, so I've never really cast any spells. Yeah. So I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? So I'm gonna roll my d20 first. Oh, you're gonna roll his initiative. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Roll it. You know what? I'm gonna just let him go on your turn. Okay. Okay. Just go. This he conjured him. And go. That's what I've been doing with Trenton. So okay. you can do it. So your turn's basically over. Your okay. characters, yep. unless you want to move or anything. You um, guys got that cloud above you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna. Swap over to where the octopus is okay. as yep. well, Mr. 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 P, yep. short for purple. <laughs> okay. I conjured up Mr. P for us. <laughs> How good. <laughs> now you attack with the octopus. Now yeah, oh, 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 oh. I'm yeah. gonna let you do your octopus All right, turn. Okay. That was what I was asking though. What, oh, so, yeah. oh yeah. He can he can do so, couple things. He can right here. He can you attack with his tentacles. Okay, you summon face spirits. No, I was wondering what I roll. That's what roll a d20. Got. Oh, well, yeah, other than that, but I was wondering after that. You just roll a d20, yeah, that's all he he's gets? Gonna roll it, he's going to okay. roll an action. Okay. It's a five. It's, it's ten to hit. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> he needs to get his sea... He has, still has sea legs. He's still got sea legs. Yeah. <laughs> A ten will not hit. Where am I getting? I got nothing. But I, I will give you inspiration. You. Each of you guys get inspiration for tonight, and I bring the token, so you can re-roll that. Okay. We need him to hit. What am I adding though with this guy? Oh. Five. Oh, okay. So that is thirteen. Thirteen is the number. Okay. We hit. You're okay. gonna roll two d six plus three. Plus three. Oh, okay. I'm giving you the stats from the monster. Okay, so that is four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, if the target is a creature, it is grappled. Okay, it's grappled. So it's <laughs> grappled by him. He's Take grabbed one of those. <laughs> He's grab he grabbed one of those. <laughs> he grabbed one of those scourges. Take pictures. Yeah. He grabbed one of the scourges, pulling him away from Westar. Thank you, Mr. P. And then it's her turn, right? 
she took her turn. She yeah. moved. And then she con she conjured. And moved. Yeah, that's that right. Okay, I did right. Now it's really your turn. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try and sneak attack the shit out of this fucking guy okay. before he hits me again. Please be a natural twenty. No, it's gonna be a twelve plus something to hit him. It's gonna be a twelve plus a lot to hit him. It's twelve plus seven, so uh, nineteen to hit. That hits. Okay. I summon a psychic blade to try and stack it in him, and it's gonna be twelve. 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. He just skids at everything he can to try and He's scramble bloody. his thing's blame. Ugh, that's fucked. <laughs> I'm done for. What else you want to do? That's it. I, you want I to use, disengage or anything? I can't. I used, okay. I used my thing to do that. Alright. I can't get sneak attack unless you're over here. Mm -hmm. So I have to use my all my bonus actions and movement to, to get it. Just then, so it's powerful, but it's... The captain comes rushing in the room with all <laughs> the pirates. They come running in to Jesus aid. Christ. <laughs> so, put them as you see fit. They come running in, you know, they picked up whatever weapons they could off of those knives and daggers they could Go off kill the, the other fish ones. Sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they just run in and they start attacking. And, uh, we're gonna go... Back to him, he's moving that cloud over to your octopus. No, no, Mr. P. Mr. Uh, P. He's got to do a dexterity save. Mm. Mr. P's got to do a dexterity save. Roll it. Mm. No, I got it. What? What'd you roll? What, a nine? Ten. Uh, he has failed, so he's going to take ten points lightning damage. He's got... He's good. Okay. He takes 10 points lightning damage. All right, I got it in my mind what he's got. Okay. All right. And the Scourge is going to attack. So I got um, two attacks. Um, one was a, uh, a 10. The other one was an 11. Oh, they're attacking me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, I didn't get hit. Okay. 10 and 11 does not hit. He gets three attacks, sorry. And the third one? Three melee attacks. He gets one bite and two claws. So four. So I do, that's not going to take it over ten, so I imagine that's okay. Uh, this guy is going to attack this pirate that came over there. Yeah, he had three attacks one. and he, never, he got ten each time? I think I got eleven on one of them. Oh, okay. No, so okay. The okay. first two I rolled together. I, You're I looking for a sixteen. Two. Yeah. Uh, this guy rolled a natural one against him. Um... Those two, one's going to attack the, well, they're both going to attack the pirate. So one rolled a, uh, a nine, so he didn't hit, but the other one rolled a 19, and he, he guts that pirate. Or the merchant, the green shirt one. Okay. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, okay. The okay. other green shirt one, but he, oh, but, this yeah, one. yeah. The guy with no, yep. yeah, okay. Now this guy wants to break out of the, yeah, he's dead. Okay. He had, a, it, listen. That's he, he had no family. He, this was... He was already he had cancer. Oh, he was right. already gone. <laughs> okay. This was his last voyage anyway. Uh, the octopus. He wants to break free of the octopus. So he's doing a, a strength check. Yes. Go ahead and roll that strength check. It is going to be a 7 plus 4. It's going to get him 11. 11. Okay. What you got, Mr. P? grappled. I think that I have to fight you back. So I got to roll a four. So he's un he's unleashed. All right. So he, he slips free from the <laughs> octopus. And we're gonna go to MJ. Those two guys over there are really they're fish fried over there pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want this guy to uh, go over here? Oh no no! Okay. I, I, he just could just stay there. Okay. Uh, those two guys are fish fried pretty good. Yeah, and this guy here. just got free. These right guys, w this one's wounded. He's bloodied. This, these two are not been hit at all. And he's still maintaining concentration with that electrical bolt. Okay. Oh, so it's my turn now. Yeah, oh, I thought they were turn. still attacking. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's your all turn. Right. All right. So. First, you with your two attacks. Okay, and this this guy right here is still. Um. He just free. got free. He got just got free. Did we ever hit him at all? Nope. Okay. And these guys have never let them have it. Yeah. Okay. So now you're going to take your turn, and then your octopus's turn. Okay. I'm going to take the 
Octopus's turn right now because he just uh, grappled and, and got roll free. Roll a d20. Yep. Three. Six. That's not good, huh? Okay, Mr. no, it doesn't hit. No, Mr. P. God. He's just like. <laughs> yeah. He still has got sea legs. <laughs> All right, then for Jura here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out my bow. Yep. And uh, 13. 13 hits. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, oh, man, I forgot my freaking. Whatchamacallit. What you need? No, I, I forgot to throw the. Whatchamacallit. You can't. You got a concentration spell up. Oh, yeah, because I got this guy. Duh. So that's a. Three. That's eight. Eight points damage on your first attack, yes. Second. This is my second? Make a second attack. Oh, oh I thought you said this is my second one. No, it's my first. 21. 22, no, sorry. The 21 and 22 hit. That's a, that's a... Nine. Nine more points damage, yes. Alrighty. Getting there. Getting there. Um, so, that means you're up, Chad. All right. Uh, I'm going to try and hit this guy again. Okay. Um, and uh, you get sneak attack because there's somebody next to him. Yeah, I'm going to try and just regular attack him. It's going to be uh, 18 to hit. That hits. So first attack. 12. Uh, 17. 18, 19, 23. How's this look? He's, he's like, oh my god, this is like the toughest battle he's ever had. He even fought a dragon and didn't almost die this hard. <laughs> so he like, <laughs> like sticks his fucking blade up through his, his brain and it just like his, like I said, his, his veins in the side of his head get real swollen and then they decompress and he falls over. Or he ignites into a bolt it ignites into of a electricity. Bolt, <laughs> which you can do. Yes, so you're going to have to do a deck save. That's like 20 something on. You passed it's it. 22 to hit. Or uh, the other one failed. So the electrical bolt knocks this pirate out. Okay. Now she was healthy as could be. She didn't. She wasn't dying. She wanted to live, but that blasted her. I have um, movement, and I have a bonus action attack if I'd like. Okay. Fish fry. Yeah. I'm gonna. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll take a, a bonus attack. Okay. At who? I'm gonna try to hit him for 14 with my second okay. uh, hand fist. Or, or yes, 14 to hit the guy casting lightning. That will not hit. So my zippity doo dah right by have, his head. You have inspiration <laughs> if you want to. That's okay. It. Yeah, the one inspiration. That's okay. okay. It was just a D4 of damage anyway. Okay. I'm trying to get his attention. Okay. Um, <laughs> you'll have his attention then. Actually, he's going to drop the cloud, and uh, he's going to shoot a lightning blast at you, Jura. Ooh. Lightning bolt. Dang. So uh, a stroke of lightning forms in a 100-foot-long line, uh, five oh, feet wide. Sorry. All right, so I need a, uh, a deck save. Does it hit me too, or? No, just her. And then plus that save. Yep, it's five feet. So 24. 24. All right, you passed it. So, uh, but you are going to take uh, half, half damage. He's going to do that lightning blast with eight d sixes. He's doing fourteen points damage, but because you succeeded, you only take seven points lightning damage. So it's eight eight d sixes. So. Uh, his concentration's gone now, the cloud's gone, and it is, these creatures get to go, what do we got, what's name wants to attack your, uh, octopusy? Mr. P. Mr. P. So he's going to hit with an 18? So. 18 yeah, hits? Yeah, that's it. Okay, he's going to take, uh, nine points piercing damage. Okay. And he's going to do his other two attacks, and if he's still alive. Okay. Oh, sweet. 
uh, 11. Hit? Uh, no. Okay, and then the other one's going to be... Hang on one second. Let me do this. You said you did how much damage that last time? Nine? Yes. Let me bring up the stats. And then you rolled 11. Yeah, it does hit. Okay. So he's going to take another nine. Okay. And then the third hit is a 16, so I know that's going to hit. So another 18 points on top of that. Okay. How's Mr. P looking? Mr. P is bloodied. <laughs> Mr. P is bloodied. Okay. So then the... Uh, those other guys are going to uh, run up to kill the pirates because the pirates are in the room. And the pirates are thinking, you know, maybe maybe we should just got away. <laughs> he did a natural 20 on that guy, oh, so he's God. dead. They cut through him. Okay. And then uh, this guy is going to attack that one. He's going to kill him, too. <coughs> so now oh my God. the captain's like, maybe, just, you know. Oh, my God. We can't, can't take off freedom. Yeah, all right. Uh, I should have finished off these fish sticks, man. It is uh, back to you guys. Okay. All right. Mr. P, you need to kill that bloody bastard. All right. Um, so Mr. P's going first. Yes. He's going to go against this guy that he keeps toying with. Yes. And um, all right, Chad. What'd you roll? 15. 20. Like 30. Perhaps, yes. So you're going to deal 2d6s. Alright. That is a 10. 13. 13 points of damage. Pretty good. So he's going to grab that guy and go, oh, whack! Yes. Right on the ground. Okay, so he's hold, he whacked him. He's okay, him. good, okay. good. He's holding him, whacked him. Good, also, good stuff. Alright. Now it's for Jestura. Your turn. Jestura. <laughs> yeah, Jestura. And then, um, no one hurts my Mr. P. Oh, God, just Jura. That's a good shot. Huh? That's a good shot. Mm, there goes my freaking. Oh, yeah, I have that. Three, three, three. Oh, oh. That's still a good shot. 17 to hit. Yeah. 17 hits. They hit. Oh, okay. So, what are your damage? And that is a, a D8. D8. With my octopus. Dice. What's your octopus dice? She's very themed. Six, eleven. All right. How's that look? Ooh. No one touches my Mr. P. And then it just goes. Whoosh. Oh, actually, no. He's on the ground. I forgot. Mr. P hit him. So I'm just gonna go right on top of him. Wham! Throw it in there. Right into his head. It takes care of him. Yeah. Like, Mr. But Mr. P's still playing with them. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck are they doing at Ruthie's? Those are people looking at them? No, they're just uh... You up, Chad? Oh, yes. My turn. Well, I know. I think I shall turn and move over here. And I'm gonna step here. Jumps off the stairs. Yep. I'm just kind of scuffling around. I'm gonna try and take out our fish booties. Those guys are still smoking from that explosion. I'm gonna try and attack one of them with a nine plus something. Come on. Come on. Come up. Sorry, sorry. Uh, 16. That hits. All right. He's next to one of my friends. Yes. All right. Should we be? Yeah, that's like a lot. How's that look? <laughs> so he goes, comes up and he goes, Ding! and that fucking zapper goes, bah! and it's almost like this thing just falls asleep right in front of him. And he can like breathe this eye of, of, of relief. And then with his bonus action, he'll make a second attack with an even higher attack roll. Mm -hmm. Get a goddamn one. The one plus. But this smaller little dart comes out of his left hand, and then he gets a five. How's that looking? He's wounded. <laughs> he hits that guy, and these two, it's like these two guys, he does it, he does it at the same time. He goes, <laughs> like twice. Gambit style. Yes. Yeah. And these two just kind of, when it hits them, it's like, it's almost like they just faint and fall asleep. They were busted up from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy's standing there like, hey, thanks. 
<laughs> you hear, you can tell what the, he's shouting. Bring the water elemental to life. Defend me. Oh no. And uh, uh-huh. he's, pushing, he's pushing that pirate toward the water bowl. And uh, on his turn, he's going to cast a fog cloud around him. So he obscures him from you guys. He gets like a 20 foot radius. <laughs> There's a fog cloud around him that you guys can't see him now uh. <laughs> as he's trying to uh, bring about this water elemental into the room. And uh, it is the other creature's turns. Um, she's all that's left is this guy, right? That guy. <laughs> so he'll go, he'll go up to you and uh, do a quick attack. Ooh. 20 to hit. Ooh, yes. So you're going to take uh, six points piercing damage. He just stabs at you. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. It's Mr. P's turn. Yeah, Mr. P. Mr. P, roll your damage or attack, and I'll tell you if it hits. Oh, I think that was a four before I moved it. Four. Nine. Nine. Nine will not hit. Nine. Mr. P. <laughs> He's still playing with that guy. He got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I am going to go ahead and take out my sword and go for the sky. Okay, six. Oh. <laughs> six. That is a 17. That will hit. Yay. Hooray. So I'm going to go ahead and stick him right in the gut. Good. You're a skewer of fish. Yep, skewer. And I have a fish fry. Six and five. That's eleven. Okay. No, I have. I have two. You have two attacks. Yeah. Okay. That's what mm-hmm. I thought. Okay. Yeah. So last time when I hit that one and killed it right off my first attack, I could have done another attack. Yeah, you didn't take a second. Then? No, I didn't. Oh, so I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. No, catch you're fine. That. You're fine. You're fine. I'm learning. That's uh. It's, that's a 19. 19 hits. All right. Sorry, I was thinking about my next thing. Um, that is a 10. All right, pretty good hits. But uh, these guys had a lot of hit yeah. points, so. I mean, they had yeah. a decent amount. These mm-hmm. are strong guys at the beginning. Uh, so, uh, that's into your turn. Whoosh, whoosh. He's definitely bloodied. Okay. What do you got, Chad? You know they're about to maybe pull an elemental, a water elemental out. Hmm. Hmm. I can't see them though. The fog's obscuring them. And this is all a wall here, huh? Uh, no, this stairs up there. I could. Um, is this the only one who's left? Yeah. Can I get up here and climb this wall? Sure. Can now I see them? I think you gotta go a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me so let me actually say, count that out. Yeah. So that's five. Be this, and there's gonna be another probably ten. Ten, fifteen. Up there. Yep. Yeah. Twenty. 25. Now I can see them. Okay, sure, yes. I got it. And they're just doing magic-y, magic-y shit. He's pushing him into the bowl, trying to force him to, to conjure up this element. He's an innocent. Yes, he's a, one of the pirate crew. I'm going to try and just uh, he's terrified. shoot a bow at this motherfucker. A regular bow shot. Mm-hmm. And that will be a 17 plus to hit. That hits. And that's just going to be... Five damage from an arrow. Tink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We just pissed him off. Yeah. Yeah. It, it grazed his gill. Shithead. <laughs> Take, Take that. that, I say. Uh, <laughs> In my jinx. Pinch poke. Yummy poke. Um, so this creature's going to attack you real quick. And that's going to be a three plus... Uh, I'll go get you a poke. <laughs> Nine. I'm not gonna hit you. Nope. Okay, so that, his, that's in his turn, and then the the main guy, he's looking over at you, thinking, "What kind of spells can I cast to kill oh, you?" Lord. What can I do to spell upon you? <clears throat> Damn. That one guy fucked me up pretty good. I don't have any health potions in my inventories. Yeah. 
I'm he's gonna, gonna see if he can cast. You. He's gonna stand his ground, see if he can cast the elemental. I'm gonna roll for it. Natural one. Okay. So he can't do anything. He has powers, but they're they're more close range. I'm not okay. ready to give the close range yet. Okay. Um, but I am gonna roll to see if the elemental appears. So I'm thinking okay. anything above the 15. I'll probably take it down five every time. Um, then we're gonna go uh, to you, ma'am. Okay. Um, this guy is still alive. Yes. So Mr. Poor Mr. P. He's bloodied up. I tell him to stop touching that guy. He's dead. Come over here and grab this guy. So. Come on, Mr. P. 11. 15. 16. Right. And we'll hit. And then it's just. 2d6. 2d6, yeah. 10. 13. Damage, okay. He's still up, and he's grappled. Oh, he's grappled. Oh yes, I'm sorry. He took 13 damage, and he's grappled. Okay, yeah. yes. He just so reaches over and plucks him. So <laughs> yeah. Mr. P is just holding him down with his tentacles. Yeah. And I'm gonna go over there and uh, take my short sword and stab that bastard in the eye. 16. Well, that is a nine plus 25. Yeah. <laughs> 25 hits? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that'll do it. That'll get right there. Right on the nosy. <laughs> that'll get there. That's yeah. a Right on the nosy. Especially he's being grappled by a... Seven. All right. That should be enough right there. He had five hit points. All right. So as he's holding him down for me, it's just a quick... Dink, right in his head. Turn him into like Rattlers. Ah, <laughs> shaking both of them. Mm-hmm. Smashing them against slag tights. Yeah. Ah. Now he's got two dead guys just playing yeah. with him. Like a little puppy dog with his new toy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Back to you, Chad. Um, I'm going to try and uh, thread the needle. I'm going to use my uh, advantage attack to try and get that sneak attack. Stick it in this guy. It's going to be 17 to hit. 17 hits. So 6, 7, 8... Uh, Four, uh, 13. Alright, 13 damage. 13 damage to him. The bow and an arrow. The bow sticks him. Yep. Anything else? Uh, that's all I can do. Okay. See, sometimes it's just whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. It's hit or miss. Hit or miss. That's still good. It's just not. I mean, you can do that every turn. <laughs> 12. So I'm at 15, so next time it's going to be set at 10. Okay, very good. Okay. Comes right, to water so, elemental. Yep. No, no, no. I'm, I he had to roll better than 15. First I did 20, then 15. Next time will be 10. I mean, that's um, what I'm saying. It's yeah. coming next round. Yeah. Okay. So then okay. Uh, it is back to you guys. Okay. So I'm going to throw the honors mark on this dude. Can you see him? Oh. Get to a place where you can. Then you okay, can okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, so I'm at the stairs here. Uh-huh. We know these are like 10 feet above, so it's going to take, you know, 10 points of movement. So, so I have to count these five. two first. So. Yep. Five, Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, right. I don't want to be that close to the guy. Well, then get over here. Yeah, right here. Can I see him? Yep. Yes. Okay. Now, you got your two attacks. Well, I got to roll first then, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using (coughs) my um, bow on him, and um, that is a twenty-seven. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so that is 1d8 and a 1d6. Yep. Six, seven, um, that is 12. 12 damage, okay. And then another. <clears throat> One more. Mark. Um, yeah, 28. The other attack. Okay. 10. Okay. He's bloody. Right. My turn? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I am going to... Don't oh, get close. Well, actually, yeah, you're right. You can kill him or try to stop the ritual. The human's doing the ritual. But he seems to be a good, a, an innocent they're, victim, they're innocent right? innocent merchants, yeah. Yeah. Um, I see, I was thinking I was killing him earlier. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you're not a murder hobo. You are part of the Harpers. They're good. I know, I know. We could do a bad guy campaign. This is a good guy campaign. No, I know, I know. I'm still going to try and kill the wizard. Okay. Maybe can we rope it's, him? It's, way, it's like way high 20s, 20s okay, to hit. That hits, yeah. It's going to be uh, 12, 13, 14, um, 20. 20 damage to him. That's all I got. Yep. And another arrow in him. Oh, God. Ten. Here, Here we go. Here he comes. It's a nine. Oh, <laughs> no water. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> It's coming up out of there. <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> now, like stopping this guy without it. killing him, like we have to, some type of movement to, like. You could do whatever you want. Get creative. I mean, I got that rope, and it seems like I'm pretty good at lassoing him. Can we like pull him away from him? Is, Try like, it is if he, you want. Is he like staring at him? Is that Try what it. keeps him going? Like, I guess he's spinning the, the the water around, trying to control Try it. it. He's so terrified he's having trouble controlling it. I mean, I either got my socks or I have my rope. You got so. 50 foot of rope. Yeah. You could try and last. What? I've never 50 seen foot of rope and, and throw him down the stairs. All the imagination. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to stop this guy from doing whatever he is doing to him. Never seen anyone do this. You want to do okay. like an attack roll and then a yeah. grapple? I'm gonna set. I'm gonna set a number that I'm okay. going for her to get. Right. Okay. This is a tough shot. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna I reach into your mind and I say, Focus. <laughs> Use the gifts of the Eladrin to to whip that elven rope around him. Reroll. Here goes the inspiration. <laughs> Even better. The dark shadows in your mind are just shitty. <laughs> you whip this rope around. And you throw it, but it, it just falls a little short. Like a human, and them kind of look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, it's your turn, Chad. I'm going to uh, five, ten, jump down, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, dash, and get up here to Jura. Okay. That's my whole fucking turn. Wow. Okay. I want to see it. All right. <laughs> and out of this, I don't know, it was at five. Yeah, I was like, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it comes out, it goes. He's I like, come up behind you. Don't, don't do it, Roman! I come up behind you and I put my arm on your shoulder and I say, Remember, your friends shoot true. And I, it just, that's it. Here we go. <laughs> It's your turn, man. All right. So I'm going to go for my uh, um, bow. Yes. Let's see. Please roll a natural 20. That would be so good. I know. That would have. Um, 15. 15 will hit. Ba -ba Do it. I'm going to. I whisper still, in here. still got meat on him. I said it in your ears. Do it. Still got some meat on him. Do it. Nine. That is a 14. All right. He's oh. still up. Oh, like 22. Alright, 22 hits. Okay. Fourteen. How does this look? Oh, bastard. We saved the pirate and then, um, okay, so I'm just gonna take, <laughs> take out Bo and I'm gonna get him does this guy have gills? Yes. Okay, I'm going right for the gills. Straight through the gills. <laughs> and he falls into the water bowl. <laughs> and he falls in, this water elemental pops out. And this water elemental is swearing. And he looks at you, Jura, knowing the almost. What do you say to it? And then I kind of like, so I, I, I know, think, I think I know who he is. It just recognizes you somehow, something about you. I just kind of tilt my head kind of like in like a confused dog and just like, Oi, do I know you? <laughs> it doesn't speak. Uh -oh. It starts to move forward towards you. What would you like to tell it? 
I, I don't know, I'd, I'd naturally want to go, like, who are you, and almost touch him. <laughs> but you know this is a thing to crush the ship and stuff like that, too. So but it could be I'm dangerous. Still, I don't know, like, I'm still, because I'm still yearning for my past, though. I think I would still naturally kind of, like, come closer that way and look at him. So what do you say, then? Are you the, I would be like, are you the man that put me in that dark space? Or, he's, he did not talk, though. I'm sure the elementals can talk if they want to. Okay. Um, he doesn't know anything about the dark space. He's wondering what you're doing up here on land. Oh, so I'm naturally, I still think I'd be naturally yearning to want to be, so I almost want to touch him. Put like up your cloak like, and walk into it. Huh? Okay. Put up your cloak and walk into it. Oh my, which one? Oh wait, I have one. You the have manta. manta. Okay, yeah. I think I would throw my cloak on and kind of naturally want to go. Same thing when I wanted to go into the thing out there in the forest. You're drawn to it. Yeah, I'm drawn to it. So you walk up to the water element. Mm -hmm. And as you're kind of staring at me, what the fuck is she doing? Yeah, and you kind of get engulfed by it. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself like in this endless ocean. But it's luminescent liquid all around you. And uh, you see this boundless sky, night sky. Uh, it's full of stars and a, and a full moon. Full moon. And everything's calm. And in the middle of the ocean is uh, an ancient island made of stone. And atop it is a magnificent silvery uh, Acropolis, just this beautiful silver building glimmers and you're really calm and you're at peace and you feel at home and then the water dissipates he goes back into the bowl I'm Ariel <laughs> and I fall back into the yeah, floor and I'm so and I take the the cloak off my head and then I look at him and I say I think I've had another vision well, I certainly hope so. I thought I was going to have to dive in there after you. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't have to. She's all like excited and My kind of like kind of <laughs> shocked at the same time, still soaked in water. And um, I don't know, there's a, it was, a, I'm in water and I feel safe. And it's, I don't feel at all in terror or fear. But there's this island in there, shaped like a, a triangle, you said? A triangle. And in it was like a city. Very curious. And I somehow, I felt like I, I've been there. It seems to me like the small crack that we have made has now grown a little larger. Something's going on, because I can also understand Aquin. Very well. I think that your destiny is before you. And from what you have learned, and just this will pass today, you will find it much easier now. I think we need to go swimming more often. Perhaps you should. Try not to do it inside of a giant monster like that again. You nearly scared my tits off. <laughs> as long as it's not mine. <laughs> Thought you'd enjoy that. <laughs> and you kind of go, I mean, that, that one pirate's, the pirates come in and start trying to help the people. Um, and you ruffle through the main uh, eel folks uh, stuff. You get about 400 gold worth of uh, fine goods. You know, like they have like some perfumes and Silverware and statues and jewelry, stuff that they've taken some from other merchants. But you do find a uh, a worn black hilted dagger. It's a dagger of venom. Ooh! So you can add that to your uh, items, and Chad can tell you all about the dagger of venom. I had one. Did you? In my chest. <laughs> no, I have no need of this. But I do believe that my destiny led me here, for here were more interactions with Talos. And I feel that whatever force that drives me takes me to wherever this evil needs to be snuffed out. And we have done so, and I am greatly appreciative. 
You and your crew have brought me to where I was destined to be. And my hand goes out to you. Then I say, looks to me like you're no longer a stranger. And I am glad for it. And he'll shake your hand. Mm -hmm. And he's going to actually tell you that he's going to stay here in this temple for, or the, it's not a temple, is it? It's a grotto. Yeah. It's a lighthouse with a grotto, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to say that he might stay here for a while and meditate and, and dwell on things. Captain walks up to y'all. It was a fine thing. I know we lost many brave members, but you still did us a service. We're better to live, on, die on our feet than die on our knees. Uh, and he gives both of you mariner coins. You can use this whenever you meet a sailor, and you will gain advantage on uh, persuasion or help and stuff like that. You show that to any sailor, and they'll help you out, because you've helped us out today. Thank you very much, Captain. <coughs> and you might even get a free drink out. <laughs> and so... Westar decides to stay at the temple and think on things and hang out with Lucian Skyhorn. He doesn't know when another vessel will come through, but with the water bowl under control of him, he now can control the waves and the ships can start sailing again. And you could go to Waterdeep or anywhere else you want to go. And you would board the uh, Kelpie's Kiss and uh, the captain's like, well, seems like things went warm out there. Uh, I guess your friend's going to stay. Yeah, he's quite the man. Yeah. Seems like a good friend to us. It's not bad, not bad at all. Hope to see him again soon. I'm sure we will. It's a small world out here. Yes, it is. But if he uh, is only half the wizard we're about to go see, we're really going to unlock your past. I can't wait. So much, so much adventure and so many more visions to see. The Eladrin are a mysterious people. Westar and Jura's meeting was connected by a fate woven by threads of magic that no mortal may ever understand. The visions they shared while they were dream fasted left Jura with as many questions as she had before meeting Westar. But the powers they possessed proved to be invaluable when they faced the forces of darkness plaguing the Skyhorn Lighthouse. The followers of Talos had been thwarted once again by Westar's efforts. With Jura at his side, he'd once again come out on top of the chaotic deity of destruction. Jura's journey would continue elsewhere as she and her crew sailed off into the sunset. But Westar would remain there in contemplation for some time waiting for such a time that the forces of Talos may show their faces once more. But that is a tale for another day. Fare thee well for now. When your heart is weary and in need of a good story, you may once again darken my doorstep. A fire and a tale of adventure will be waiting for you then.